So the number one question I think I've been asked lately is how long does a body last or how long before decomposition sets in? Um, kind of that same general question. Uh, I wish there was a straightforward answer. I've touched on a lot of points of this answer in different videos, so I thought I would just do a quick video about this specific thing. I guess decomposition and embalming and, and kind of all that. So um, an embalmed body, so some statistics of uh, all over the place, and obviously none of these are set in stone because it, there's it's I guess there's maybe an average here that we're we're looking at so an embalmed body in a sealed vault can last a uh, hundred plus years where the body is not decomposed down to bone um, it's you know you could view the body to some extent um, later on I think there's a lot of uh, bodies that are kept really well preserved um, there's some in Europe that are, you know, you can go and view um, heads of state and, and things, bodies that have been there for years and years and years. And it's because they're being well preserved by a whole team of people that are caring for this body and that body is being retreated every few years and um, really uh, focused on and, and all of the best chemicals and, and skills and tools are being used to preserve that person. So a body, if you took a body um, embalmed and just put them right into the ground, no casket and vault, they would probably, before they turned into bone, um, last eh, five to eight years or so. Um, whereas an unembalmed body is still going to take a long a period of time, possibly several years to decompose, depending on the condition. Um, dry climates produce longer results when it comes to um, an embalmed body or, or any body for that fact, uh, decomposing where it's going to be a longer period of time before that decomposition happens um, to the full extent because the bacteria in the body need moisture and um, need that uh, water to live and to keep going. So if it's a sealed vault, there's no air movement, um, they're buried in a clay type ground rather than a loose soil, um, they're going to be uh, more well preserved. So it all depends on, you know, in terms of the burial, the condition and the material that the person is buried in. So uh, humidity decomposes a body faster. So let's say um, you're all standing around grandma's casket at the end and everyone thinks it'd be wonderful to stick another uh, flower that they love inside the casket, not throw in the grave, but inside the casket with grandma. Well, those flowers all contain moisture. That moisture is going to excel the decomposition process with her for her body. Um, most people this doesn't really matter with because it's a body, they're already dead, they're going to decompose anyway, so the length of time that it takes doesn't matter, but to some people it does. Uh, so I prefer, I, I, if I'm there and it's my loved one, I'm like, yep, no flowers, get them out. Um, no flowers in there because I would rather the person uh, almost mummify, kind of dry out decomposition rather than liquefy because of a moist environment. That's just my opinion. Um, so bacteria requires air to survive also because that is what it thrives on is, is kind of what we do. We need water, we need air, we need, we're a living, breathing thing and just like bacteria is. So if you cut off the air supply by sealing the vault or sealing the casket, same thing, that bacteria is going to eventually die, it, the decomposition process halts. Um, so underground is the slowest, and then the quickest is if someone is in the water. So say they were buried at sea or they died out in the water, they're going to decompose much quicker than normal because of all the moisture. So I think the best thing, um, so I guess, well, Going back, so the question was asked, you know, how long a 
person that's been embalmed can be viewable and, and is going to maintain how they look for visitation and services. And it depends on so, it depends on so many things. How quickly they were embalmed after they died, if they were kept in a cooler or not. Um, you know, cooler prolongs the decomposition process. But once someone's taken out of the cooler, it almost it, it goes rapid back up to where they would almost be at that point. So it accelerates it, that decomposition, so it catches up to the person basically um, if embalming is not done right away. Um, a lot of medicines that people are given are killing cells and um, are degenerating the body. So the uh, a body that now is not the same as a body was 50 years ago because of all the medicines and um, the extent that we go to to keep bodies alive and to keep people alive past when they probably would have died on their own. So I've gotten bodies where I go to embalm and they are already showing signs of decomposition when they just died two hours prior because parts of their bodies are dying before the rest of them because they're being kept alive with you know unnatural things but that are natural in our society and in our medical community now um, you know with ventilators and um, just uh, just different medicines, I guess, that are being given to treat um, cancers or, or whatever um, are keeping bodies going longer where parts of you are actually just dying, but other parts are still going. So we are seeing that uh, within the context of the body and the makeup of the body because of that decomposition showing so quickly after death, whereas those things probably wouldn't start showing for a day or two after death. So definitely seeing that. Um, so a body that is in state, as they call it, for visitation, somebody that is being laid out for visitation, um, you know, they could they could be great for two weeks, but they may also be um, ready to be buried after a day. It really um, there's there's no way to know, and the embalmer just does their best for the circumstances in front of them, and you know, hopefully their their skills gets that person through that vi viewing, through that visitation and services and um, to the burial without there being any um, purging, which is when fluid comes out of a mouth or a nose or other areas or without any um, dehydration where like the tip of the nose may get dry or fingertips may dry out or lips may dry out. So there's a lot of different um, things that can happen that um, we try and combat with embalming but may surface during the the process of the visitation and service but um, normally we can you know control a lot of that so um, I know that I had a gentleman and he was involved I did not embalm him but he was embalmed after an accident and um, during the visitation he started leaking and one of the family members came to get us and said he's got fluid coming out of his mouth and um, bless her heart it was a sister-in-law and she stood by the casket and wiped his mouth during the whole visitation it was a younger man so it was a huge visitation and so in between visitations we were able to re-aspirate and, and take that fluid out of his cavity which was creating pressure and pushing the fluid out of his mouth and able to kind of get him cleaned up, but it started again later. He was just decomposing very rapidly. He had been in water for a little while, um, and so there was just things that we could not combat um, quick enough to get him preserved well enough for the services. So that night after the second visitation, we sat and had a discussion with the family and let them know very honestly and very transparently what was going on and that we were going to basically put dry ice on him that night to cool him down to um, try and stop what was happening to at least be able to allow them to see him at the funeral the next day and so it did work in terms of um, you know ceasing that 
rapid decomposition that was happening and the next day uh, we were th we were thankful at the funeral home that it was it was the funeral day and that we were going to be burying him because of his condition being so bad and the family was thankful we had been honest with them and had talked to them through what was going on and so they knew walking in that day that there may be additional problems and so it was luckily it worked out in the end um, for what they wanted to do but you know being honest about what was transpiring was um, won us a lot of points I guess and and really was was great for the connection and the relationship with that family so just wanted to talk for a brief through a few steps of decomposition to just talk about what a few of those look like and maybe explain a few of them a little bit more so the as soon as a person dies um, your body basically starts eating itself so the um, enzymes in the body start to self digest um, the cells that are that are in you and so um, that is kind of what creates that that decomposition is is your body starts eating at itself because there's no new air coming in there's no new um, anything coming into your body and so the body just starts to cannibalize essentially uh, on itself and that starts literally immediately um, then rigor mortis is another one that I think there's so many uh, misuses of what happens during rigor mortis but two to six hours after the body dies rigor mortis sets in and it is a stiffening of the body and it's not the bones it's the um, there's chemicals in the muscles and the tissues and just your cells and the blood and it just this hardening starts to happen and so when we get someone they're usually in rigor and we typically have to break up that rigor and we're not breaking any bones doing it we're essentially just stretching that muscle back out and breaking the rigor mortis that hardening of the tissue we're just loosening it um, and so we just forcefully almost have to not hurting the person but have to bend those limbs back out bend and leg back out um, to get the mobility in the arms especially and sometimes in the hands hands often clench up or um, are in odd shapes and so you have to just bend out a hand back to normal position and um, not hurting the person once again we're just loosening up what has happened during that rigor mortis now that rigor mortis will then loosen itself up 24 to 48 hours after the death because what has happened is that the enzymes have eaten enough tissue within the body to eat away enough muscle and and tissue to loosen up on its own and so if someone um, we see a body that may have been dead for a little while and they're kind of loosey-goosey we know that they've been dead at least a day because that rigor mortis is already passed and they're now into the next stage of decomposition another thing that happens is that gravity so the blood that's in your body all settles it's not circulating anymore so depending how you're laying so let's say someone is laying face down so someone has died at home they're laying face down on the floor because they were alone and they've been found one thing that they look at um, the medical examiners and things look at is that where the blood is pooled so if it's pooled on their face and on their chest and the front of their legs and arms then they've been laying that way for a long time and you'll hear them you know on crime movies ooh, you can tell that the body's been moved because of the um, where the staining is on the on the body because if a body lays in a certain position and that blood pools long enough the skin just stains the tissue stains from the blood being in the um, on that tissue long enough and I'm not saying blood outside the body it's the blood inside the body so then when the body is righted so maybe laid back on the back the face is going to remain dark it's gonna remain um, dark red from that blood pooling in the face and we as embalmers hope we can get that to clear um, sometimes though it has stained and we can't and we have to use more cosmetics 
um, that smell that starts the decomposition smell. You'll see the Vicks if you watch, you know, any crime movies where they put the Vicks under their nose or, or something to get rid of the smell. It is a very distinct smell and it, it sticks um, because decomposition, as the body is breaking down and as the fat cells are being broken down, they're being liquefied essentially into the air. So decomposition is basically the decomposed body in the air in fat cell solubles and so it sticks to your clothes, it sticks in your nose, um, and it does kind of gag you and it's not something that's not, oh I have a tough stomach. It's just part of the smell and what it does. Um, there's no fighting it. No, I have never vomited. <laughs> I get asked that too if I've ever thrown up, but no, I never have um, from, you know, a body. But uh, so what happens is there's microorganisms in the intestines and they start eating through your stomach and through the intestines out into your cavity in your stomach and they create all this kind of air within there because of that. Um, what them digesting you and so and I, I refer but you know you see deer maybe on the side of the road where their stomachs are big and bloated or um, you know possums or, or whatever but it's that same effect so if a body was just left to laid decomposing their abdomen is going to get large from all that activity going on in there and that is a the major source of decomposition going on is in that cavity. So one of the first things we see um, is the lower left quadrant of a belly or the lower quadrant total of a belly turns green. The skin does. And that's one of the things when we get people from a hospital or hospice or a home death and they have that green lower abdomen already and they just died, we know that they've been die they've parts of them have been dead for a while because they're already decomposing and we see that in that lower abdomen um, usually within so if a body dies say somebody dies at home nobody has found them within eight to ten days for sure they're not going to be recognizable now this is going to be accelerated if let's say it's summer and it's really hot outside and they don't have air conditioning or it's winter and they've died in their bed with the heat going under a whole bunch of blankets. I've seen kind of both cases um, where you have a lot more heat, a lot more um, moisture because they've been laying there maybe a little sweaty and then they die and they've got all that extra heat and moisture under those blankets or in the air um, because of those conditions. So they typically will become unrecognizable um, because they will have that bloat or really discolored, um, skin gets really dark, black, um, that swelling that hap there's a swelling that happens within the tissue, um, sometimes the eyes protrude, the tongue protrudes, um, so it's, it's definitely not good and it's always sad to see that that happens to somebody, um, you know, and that maybe somebody wasn't checked on long enough that they were home and were dead that long that nobody had checked on them for a few days and um, that happened. That always makes me a little sad. Um, so 24 days after death, if someone was left out and died, about 24 days is when um, you're usually kind of at the end of the process of decomposition the decomposition where your body is basically itself down you're down to um, bone the tissue is still going to be there but it's not going to be um, kind of on the flesh as much it's going to be hanging off um, kind of uh, eaten down to the basic parts of it so uh, if you watch crime shows and things these timelines are where all of this has come from where they can tell how long somebody's been dead and a lot of that goes back to the body farms I've talked about where they put bodies in different states of um, of death where they're you know under a rock in a tree in a car in a box and everything so they can see how different elements affect decomposition in different locations so they can tell insect and um, weather and how all of it affects decomposition so 
I think that's all fascinating. I think it's really such an interesting, you know, what nature does. It's, it's, it's natural and, you know, everybody who says they want green burial and they want natural, like this is, this is what happens. This is natural and this is how we go back to the earth. This is how every living thing goes back to the earth in a natural state. So hopefully this answers um, some of the multiple questions I've been getting about all of this in general. Um, by all means, ask away and I'll be happy to answer more. Thanks guys.